Historic Preservation. Organizations across the country promote a variety of activities on the local, state, and national levels. Whether you are interested in touring historical sites or helping to preserve the history of your backyard, there is something for everyone. What exactly is the value of preserving a city's historic structures? Is it a good thing? A bad thing? A only good for the rich people? For example, a trio of separate studies by New York Landmarks Conservancy offers some of the most comprehensive attempts to quantify the impact of historic preservation. Examining everything from economic effects to demographics and housing costs, studies provide an arsenal of fascinating data points reflecting how historic districts shape New York. Historic preservation has a positive economic impact. More than $800 million is invested annually in New York's historic buildings, creating jobs for 9,000 New Yorkers and providing paychecks of over $500 million each year. Because rehabbing an old building is labor intensive, more of the money from these projects feeds back into the local economy when you compare it to new construction, where the bulk of the expense is in materials, not labor. Historic districts attract creative workspaces. Jobs and creative industries are disproportionately found in historic districts. As we know, New York City is a hotbed for artists, designers, and other creative workers who help make New York a vibrant place. Creatives seek out older buildings in part because they believe the unique spaces and rich historic details help foster creative thinking. Historic districts have a greater residential density than the borough average. Historic districts are the densest residential neighborhoods in every borough of New York City, usually having a density of two to three times that of the borough overall. Residents of historic districts tend to be wealthier, more educated, and white. This point could add fuel to the argument that historic preservation is elitist. In Brooklyn and Manhattan, the mean household income in a historic district was more than double the income of households elsewhere in the borough. Let's take a look at some national preservation projects. Independence Hall in Philadelphia. One of the most important buildings in the history of the United States Philadelphia's Independence Hall is where both the Young Nation's Declaration of Independence and its Constitution were debated and adopted into law. Predating U.S. independence, the Georgian-style hall was completed in 1753 and originally housed the Liberty Bell, which now stands across the street in its own building. The Alamo of San Antonio most Americans know the phrase, remember the Alamo, even if they're not exactly sure what transpired at the 18th century Spanish mission. Later secularized and used as a fortress, in 1836 the Alamo was the site of a bloody and decisive battle of the Texas Revolution fought between Texas's early Anglo settlers and the Mexicans who won the war. One of the most visited historic sites in the country, Today, the fort welcomes about 3 million visitors annually. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. When it opened in 1937, San Francisco's instantly recognizable suspension bridge was both the longest and tallest in the world. It's since been surpassed by other structures, but remains an iconic landmark known around the world. Open to both cars and pedestrians, the bridge is crossed each day by about 10,000 walkers and 6,000 bikes. The Empire State Building in New York City. 
the most recognizable skyscraper in the world, was erected in the late 1920s and has been a mobbed tourist destination ever since. These days, it attracts about 4 million visitors each year. At 102 stories, it's no longer the tallest building in the country. That title goes to the nearby One World Trade Center, but it's still one of the most distinctive. Capable of displaying 16 million colors, its state-of-the-art LED light system changes for special events and holidays. The Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. This gateway to the west is the world's tallest arch, as well as the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere at 630 feet. Designed in 1947 and completed in 1965, the stainless steel clad arch commemorates Western expansion in the United States. One of the most visited tourist attractions in the world, the arch welcomes about 4 million visitors each year. Trinity Church in Boston. Erected in the 1870s in Boston's Back Bay, this Romanesque, rough stone church is one of the city's most well-known landmarks. Each December, the church welcomes many visitors who line up for its free candlelight carols, performances of traditional carols and anthems that have been offered by the Trinity choirs and instrumentalists since 1909. Fort McHenry in Baltimore. Baltimore's Fort McHenry was built in 1798 and played a key role in the War of 1812 when, in 1814, U.S. armed forces successfully defended Baltimore Harbor from an attack by the British Navy. Later, during the Civil War, it served as a prison for captured Confederate soldiers and sympathizers. The fort is the one reference in the Star Spangled Banner and received hundreds of thousands of tourists each year. The Statue of Liberty in New York City Originally conceived as a gift from France to the U.S., this 151-foot copper lady was, perhaps, the world's first crowd-funded campaign when the French government couldn't afford to complete and ship the statue stateside, an 1885 drive started by New York World publisher Joseph Pulitzer attracted more than 120 contributors, most of whom gave less than a dollar. Lady Liberty arrived in pieces shortly thereafter and was assembled in the since renamed Liberty Island, where she was still welcomes visitors to the New York Harbor. Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. In a city crowded with some of the most recognizable monuments in the world, the Lincoln Memorial stands out for its graceful elegance that evokes a Greek temple. Located on the western edge of the National Mall, architect Henry Bacon's masterpiece features a larger-than-life, seated Abraham Lincoln exuding calm and steadfastness. Consistently DC's most visited monument with an average of 6 million visitors per year, the site looks even more special at night, and you can stop by 24 hours a day. What would our heritage look like without these and other historic landmarks?